In this example, we'll take a look at the Sapphire Plugins Film Damage plugin running here inside of Final Cut under the FX Plug architecture. Uh, Sapphire Plugins Film Damage is going to do just what the name says by adding dust and grain and defocus and flicker and all the elements that you typically associate with uh, old, poorly aged or aged or poorly preserved film. I want to go ahead and take a look at the source clip first here and just play this through without any sort of a plugin applied to it and then show you the differences and all the different controls we can have by using Sapphire Film Effect. So here you see the clip. It's got a lot of nice uh, saturated color which will be good for uh, showing you some of the color control options inside of Film Damage. And I'll go ahead and stop that and actually just scrub through the beginning of the clip and go to my uh, video filters tab or palette rather and go to my Sapphire Stylize Film Damage. So you can see instantly it's uh, darkening the image, it's adding bits of grain and dust and whatnot. And as we go ahead and look over here at the uh, control panel, you'll see there are quite a lot of different controls. Um, and all of these pretty much serve as the master controls. And within each of these different um, controls, you can actually go ahead and look at some more additional parameters beneath that. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at the color correction option. And as I click on the arrow to the left of color correct, it's going to open up a couple sub details. And you can see here I've got saturation, uh, scale lights and offset darks and whatnot. I pretty much just want to play with the saturation. So the first thing you want to do if you're trying to simulate an old film that hasn't been preserved well is take out some of the color. Uh, so I can just pull down some of the saturation here and you can see it's going to just fade out some of the color, uh, again giving it that nice faded look to it. Uh, and then from there I have all my master controls. So I'll go ahead and close up the color correction options and then just scrub through some of these. Um, for instance the hairs. I've got my hair options here and then I can go ahead and really just step back out and start adding hairs. So you see as I do that, it's just going to generate different hairs throughout the image, uh, randomly placed. And then uh, within my hairs, I have a whole bunch of hair details. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you where it says hair details. I've got an arrow to the left of the hair details. I can click on that, and it's going to open up all these sub-monitors. So I've got you know, the persistence, so how long does the hair stay on screen, how fast does it wiggle, how often does it wiggle, What's the opacity of it, the size? All these are, are pretty straightforward in terms of the different controls uh, and what they mean. Um, some of the more interesting ones uh, I find to be uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the shake and in the uh, scratches options. So I want to go ahead and just start adjusting my scratches here. I've got total number of scratches set to five. I'm really just going to go ahead and sort of pull those up more. So I've got a lot more scratches going on here. And you can see how it's populating the screen with a lot of black and white scratches. Um, now as I go to my scratches details, you can see a ton more controls here. Um, again, pretty straightforward in terms of black versus white and how long each, each of the scratches are. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and make the length of the black scratches uh, to be pretty short here. So you can see how it's actually shortening those up. Um, what I'm actually going to do is, is play with the uh, scratch area center. So in this case, I can actually move my scratches around. I can have them offset from the uh, main input if I want, or the main focus of the source. Um, and you've got this jumper here, uh, for lack of a better term. And I can actually start shifting the scratches around by adjusting my scratch area center. Let's, so let's say I want a lot of scratches. I want a lot of black and white scratches, but I don't want them on top of him. I want to make him in, in, in the clear view of the, uh, of the image. It's easily, I can just go ahead and turn up my scratches area center, turn that left or right, uh, positive or negative, and offset the scratches. And here I'm just going to frame preview this for a little bit with you just to show you a little bit of how this works. Um, some of the other cool things we have are the, uh, are the shake parameters. So with camera shake, you've got that traditional stuck in the projector gate. And we'll take a look at that and show you how you can uh, either make the border fatter or thinner. So I'm going to go over to my, uh, close up my scratches detail and go on to my uh, camera shake, which is up here. You've got your shake amplitude. And as I do that, what I'm going to do is just turn up the amplitude here to go ahead and add a little bit of camera shake. And we'll play this back a little bit more so you can see how you've got that bumping, jumping, stuck in the projector gate type of look. And I can go ahead and step into any one of these frames here and probably want to get a frame with a little bit of shake in between to show you how, again, one of the more unique parameters within, uh, within shake details is the inner frame border height. And inner frame border height just basically means how fat or how thin is the border between um, your top clip and the clip beneath it in the border roll. So I can turn my inner frame border height really thick or make it really thin as well if I want. And as you see, adjusting it to a smaller value is of course going to make it very thin. I can also add a bit of motion blur to it, which I think looks pretty cool, especially when you've got a lot of shake going on. Um, you've got that rapid motion blur going on. I'll turn up the motion blur 
and I'll preview this a little bit more for you. So as it's jumping between frames here, as it's giving you that skipping look, you've actually got uh, a whole lot of motion blur. And what's very cool about this is as the uh, the image is shaking, you're actually seeing the, the next frame. So it's not just duplicating this the, uh, the first frame, but it's actually showing you the frame beneath it or the frame, uh, the, the next frame in the sequence as you have the, uh, the shake going on. Uh, we'll turn down the shake motion blur so you can see the image a little bit more here and show you some of the other options. You've got vignetting you can adjust here, vignette darkness, so it's going to go ahead and give you these uh, nice darkening outer of the outer borders. Um, camera defocus, you can have it go in and out of focus. Um, and I mentioned before, you've got all the hair and, and, and dust and scratch details. Um, with each of those rendered elements, such as hair or, or dust, you can, of course, change the color or the stains as well. I should mention you can change the color of those, um, the frequency of those, the size of those. And they're all pretty straightforward. It's, um, it depends on how much or how little of the image you want to, to be affected. Um, and having said this, of course, you can turn off any of these subcontrols simply by turning off the master control. So let's say, well, I made my, my scratches black and white and, and long, and I've offset them, but you know, I really don't want scratches. So there's no need to go back into all your scratches details. Here, you can simply go to your master controls and turn off scratches, and any of the uh, adjustments you've done are now are no, null and void, and all scratches are removed. Uh, so that is film damage.